Hey guys, I'm Ryan and in this video I'm going to show you how to create a turntable animation like this using Blender. So let's get into it. This model is part of a modular Dungeons and Dragons tile set I created for a Christmas themed campaign I hosted a few years ago. I modelled around 30 modular pieces and 3D printed over 180 game tiles. After the campaign had finished and the heroes victorious, my models were just sitting in a folder gathering hypothetical dust. So I thought I'd use them for this tutorial. So in order to showcase our models, we're going to create a simple turntable animation, which we'll then use as a template to render any other models we may have. So let's get started. So in this scene, I have my model and three lights. And the first thing we're going to do is add a circle. We're going to select Shift A to bring up our Add menu and go to Curve, Circle. Now, if your object is too big or too small, you can just select the circle, select our Scale tool and click and drag until you're happy with the size. Don't worry if you don't get this perfect, you can always adjust this later. So the circle we've just created is a path for our camera, but we'll get to that step in just a moment. Select our camera and come over here to Object Properties. Now we're going to type in 0 in the X, Y and Z transform values. This will reset our camera to the middle of our scene. Now in the rotation values, we'll type in 90 in the X rotation and 0 for both the Y and Z rotation. Now select the Move tool and move our camera so that it lines up with our circle. Then select our camera and hold and shift, select our circle. Now we're going to parent our camera to our circle. So if we hit Ctrl P, we'll bring up this parent window and what we want to do is select follow path. Our camera will now rotate around our circle. Now if we split our view by going to the top right here and dragging out a new window, now select this little icon here to change our view to our camera view. So this is a great start, but it's very basic. So what we want to do is have the added ability to tilt our camera. So let's add a plane axis, which can be found by hitting Shift A and going to MD, Plane Axis. This is going to be the center point of our camera. So wherever the plane axis is, the camera will rotate around it. So select our camera and go to the Object Constraints Properties over here. Click on this drop down menu and select Track 2. So what this is doing is telling our camera I want the focus to be whatever target I choose. So for our target, we're going to select this little eyedropper and select the plane axis. Now we have control over the rotation of our camera. So the plane axis controls the tilt of our camera and the circle object controls the position and rotation of our camera. So I'm going to rotate my camera around and try to find an angle that I like. Now that I'm happy with the pose, I'm going to change the length of our animation. Right now, our animation is only 100 frames long. We want to change that to about 250. It's a pretty simple process, so we'll just select the circle and go to Object Data Properties, Path Animation, and change this from 100 to 250. Now, if we scroll through, you can see the animation is lasting 250 frames instead of 100. Now, let's move on to rendering. So go to this camera icon over here Change your render engine to Cycles. Change your device from CPU to GPU if you have a GPU that's supported. Now select Adaptive Sampling. Open up Denoising. Select Render and change this to Optics. Finally, move to Performance. I'll change these settings to 512 by 512. Just as a heads up, these settings work best for me. I get quicker results this way. But every machine is different, so you may want to run your own tests. Now select the upper properties. It's this little printer icon over here. So this is our resolution. If you want, you can change it, but I'm happy with HD for now. And this is our length. Again, I'm happy with 250 frames, so I'll leave that too. Now select this folder icon, browse to where you want to save your animation, and give it a name and hit accept. If we want to render our animation, we can go to render, render animation. This will be a perfectly fine animation, and you can definitely use it to showcase your work. However, there are a few other things you may want to do before hitting render. If we add a plane by hitting Shift A and then go into Mesh Plane, we'll have a surface for our model to cast a shadow on. So I'll quickly scale this up and show you what it looks like rendered. As you can see, we'll have the floor plane in shot with our shadows being cast. However, if you like the shadows but aren't a fan of the floor plane, we can actually turn the floor transparent in a way that it actually leaves the shadows. We can do this by going to the object properties of the plane. Then going down to visibility and tick shadow catcher. So if we hit F12 to make another render, you can see that we've removed the plane and kept the shadows. 
We can even go one step further and make the background transparent. So if you want to replace the background in Photoshop or GIMP, you can. So we do this by going to the Render Properties menu, go down to Film, and then select Transparent. Now if we hit F12, you can see that our model has a transparent background along with a semi-transparent shadow. Now that we've created our template, if you want to replace your model, import a new model by going to File, Import, and I'm going to import an OBJ file, so I'll select that and import my new model. And once you have it in your scene, select this icon, and select this camera icon here. Now if you want to hide your old model from the viewport and the renderer, uncheck both the eyeball and the camera. And that's it. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you want to see more, be sure to leave a like, consider subscribing, and hit the notification bell. That's all from me, I'll see you around.